Adam is What's connected. Up? Let's go. Can you hear me? Yeah, dude, I can hear you. What's going on, bro? How, how you doing? Pretty good, get, man. If I need to turn this light on, let me know. Oh, man, you can do whatever you like. Whatever creates the ambiance for you. Classic. You and Simon both. First thing that you guys do when you join the, the chat on Zoom, you're like, got to fix my light. Got to get the right ambiance. Exactly. Exactly. Well, what's going on, man? Happy to be here. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I'm excited. Num week yeah. two winner. You jumped in one week and you've been in part of the community and straight away you, you slayed. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, man. It was so easy. Um, you know, the group is, is very welcoming and very easy to, to dive into. It wasn't hard at all. Oh, that's so, so good. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, I love it. So this is your little studio that you got going right here? This is my studio, big ass cab over here. And then uh, I've been watching this guy named Matt Bolton for uh, about six months. And he has the same looping pedal that I do. And he added a keyboard. And I don't have a synthesizer, but I've got a controller. And so I'm learning how to lay down a nice beat and uh, <clears throat> put a rhythm guitar over that, add some color with the, the controller and some a main stage and then a uh, vocal uh, harmonizing pedal here. So I just, I really just diving into looping as an, as an artist. And uh, this is where I do all my practicing and yeah. It's absolutely epic, man. That's so cool. Yeah. So my, probably my biggest mistake through all this is outpacing. Uh, my purchases outpace my skill sets. <laughs> <laughs> it's the story of all of our lives as musicians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, you know, I when I was when I was twenty, I couldn't afford anything, and so now that I'm like, I've I've had my business for seven years, and I have a little bit of time and money on my hands. I'm like, finally, it's time to get get back to work. But I'm like, wait, I haven't kept up with the skill. So, I remember I bought my RC three hundred, and um, mm -hmm. I got a brand new, the first one. Um, cause I had two of them and, uh, the first one I bought, I bought it and it sat in the box for like six months and I was like, yeah. and then when I first used it, I was like, oh my God, I'm so stupid. I had it in my box for like six months. So anyone out there who like struggles to get started, that was literally me all the time. For sure. Yeah. I, I have this amazing drum machine, sequencing machine. I have no idea how to use it. And I, I'm kicking myself because you can invest in you can invest in lessons. You can invest in um, going to workshops. You can invest in the skill, um, and sometimes it's just easy to swipe a card and worry about it later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I'm all too familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and then, here I am trying to trying to you know put put to use these tools. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then you get the you get the random bill like, hey, you haven't paid your tax bill for this year, and you're like, wait a minute, what? And then you're like, you know, oh god, minor minor, de minor <laughs> details. <laughs> that's cool. All right, well, what can I do to help you? Like, what what area typically? Like, I mean, you can do whatever you want in this lesson. It's like, um, sure. I like to look at it as more like a coaching call, um, help you out yeah. cause, and not have you like sit there and just practice an instrument. It's kind of like wasting your time. But sure. whatever you need out of uh, my brain, let's go. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll tell you my biggest target right now is booking more gigs. And um, I think I put some of the stuff on the back burner because I know how to play that guitar. I could play that for four hours. And I've done that multiple times and it it's not a bad gig. My my appetite for doing that thing over and over and over again starts to go down. And I want to start getting complicated and start making magic, you know, live. And it's actually working against me because I'm not doing the thing that got me booked in the first place, which was just, dude, sit down, shut up and play the guitar and sing. Like <laughs> overcomplicating my set list, making mistakes live. And so then I'm like, ah, shit, I don't want to play anymore. Um, so I got to get back to the thing that I'm doing that I know how to do. What I'd like to do is add a step in between this and that, which is just make that better. Yeah. And that's my goal. 
Um, so if you if you wanted to see how I approach a song, give me some feedback. If you wanted to hear, you know, a common thing that I'm doing, I just get tired of the strumming. And I'm like, how do I add a layer of uh, style, but not complexity? I don't need yeah. another long road in front of me. Yeah, easy. I already, I already have one. I already have a big long road in front of me. I <laughs> uh, did. I get it. So, um, Typically, uh, like what what kind of like work cadence were you looking at, and how much money? Like, so when I when I look at it, there's two factors that I'm one, wondering. Like, one, how much money are you trying to make, and um, like, what is your expectation? Are you trying to get like six gigs a weekend? Are you trying to work nonstop? Like, is there a there needs to be like some form of goal that I can see so that like we can set up the skill acquisition to make it so that you can like get towards that a good question i can I, I can realistically see myself doing four to five gigs a week with my desire i think the market in my area might support three a week for a while until i book these maybe become a weekly musician somewhere or i get a lot of annual uh, events hiring me every year um and so I'm not worried about how much I can make because uh, I'm just worried. I'm not. I'm not. I'm focusing on the the type of gigs I'm getting and how often. Yeah. Um. But usually, if I'm going to talk about money, it's I can for public gigs I can get two fifty and up for three hours, and then for private gigs it's six hundred dollars uh, or up for four hours. Yeah. Uh, that's usually where I'm at. And like, are you? And um, per week, so I, I say this because like I set a goal for myself when I was gigging. By the way, I, I look like I, if I look like I'm in gym clothes, it's because I'm about to go to the gym after this. <laughs> it's oh, like, cool. but the, uh, this is the only time you don't see me in jeans. But uh, okay, <laughs> jeans and boots is my go-to uh, uh, outfit um, uniform. Yeah. But the uh, so the way I looked at it, I just like full transparency. The way I look at my one was like, okay, well, I need to make three thousand dollars a week for me. For me, three thousand mm-hmm. dollars a week takes care of my family, my daughter, my wife, um, allows me to like continue to grow the business and sustain just living right now. It's just really- Can you do that as a musician in, in Australia? Yeah, 100%. And so- Okay. So the the thing is like, you're because you're part of school and you're also like, uh, you you listen to Alex Hormozzi as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So have you read $100 million yeah. offers? Yes. Perfect. So- then you you've got the framework down. So basically, yeah. When I first read hundred million dollar hundred million dollar office, I was literally sitting there. I was like, "Fuck, I've got." When my daughter was born, I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna take. Um, I'm gonna stop teaching. Uh, I'm gonna take time off because everyone says they regret missing out on the newborn stage and early parts of the of our daughter's life and or their kids' lives." And I was like, "Okay, well, I'm not gonna make that mistake. You can always make money in your life." Um, that was a really dumb financial move. Uh, because all I did was just rack up debt and whatever. And so I had to really quickly be like, okay, well, I want to spend more time with my family, so I need to make sure that every time I play a gig, I need to get more out of the gig. So Mm. I very quickly reverse engineered. I was like, I looked at every single gig that I'd done, and I was like, okay, well, how can I charge? Instead of doing like $800 a gig, how can I charge $3,000 a gig? And so that's pretty much what I started reverse engineering. And I was like, okay, what are all the value equations that are going to get me that much money? So it wasn't about like how many gigs can I do because I was already doing that. I I had a residency and then I was filling in slots. And where I lived, uh, the musicians are great and super chill. Um, A lot of them don't want to work, work really hard. Um, They, they have, they have jobs during the week and then they do music in the, in the weekend. So um, pretty much me and another guy, we could do like him and I could both do like four to six gigs a weekend, um, no sweat. And so I was doing that. And then some days were 12, 12 hour days. Cause here where I live, we do four hour gigs. So they're not three hours. Yeah. Three hours is a luxury. Yeah. And some, of, some, right. of, some of my gigs here are like five hours and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> half of my gigs are three and half of them are four. And it's like that extra little hour I have to it's a bit brutal. Put in a few more. Yeah, it's just <laughs> a little bit more work. So, yeah. So, so that that would would be my first thing is like define what number you want, 
Um, and sure. then and then look at like, well, what are the things that are going to get it there? So for me, um, it was one, I just need to have an epic set list. Um, not in the sense that I ever use a set list because I never use a set list when I play live. I just off the cuff, I have 150 songs that I know really well. And at any point in time, I can just pull it out. And I, I there's about five or six of them that are straight up bangers that I don't really know really well. And I'll pull up the lyrics. But I try to think of myself as a DJ. Um, and then all mm-hmm. I would do is just like take parts of songs to engage with people depending on the part of the night. So the first thing was epic set list. The next thing was improve as a vocalist to get really, really good. Um, mm. the, the third thing was learn how to crowd engage, like learn how to be not cringe because a lot of people are like, all right, engage with the crowd. Well, hope you guys are having a great time. But they're not looking for that vibe. I'm talking about like, you know, Dave is sitting in the corner there and you can see he's vibing on it and you hook in on him and you're like, hey, are you ready for this one? This one's for you. And then you do like some mad lick and he's like, oh, dude, that was sick. And that you're building those rapports with people in the crowd. Um, that's a skill that I had to work on. The fourth mm-hmm. one was how do I um, I be super fast with bookings? So like as soon as an inquiry comes in, bam, instantly reply. reply. So there's like no friction. Um, for sure. And then the fifth one was I learned how to do videography for myself anyway through content creation. So I had a really small setup. It only cost me like, I don't know, like $1,200, $1,500. And I could shoot videos. And I can send you the link to my Instagram, Sneaky Beats Music um, or Sneaky mm-hmm. Beats Townsville. I, Sneaky Beats TSV. And you can see mm-hmm. all the videography that's there. I shoot all that videography. And then I just deliver it to clients at the end of the event. So they finish the event, and then after the event, everything's been prompt. Every communication before then has been like prompt. I accommodate whatever thing those things they're looking for, and then on top of that, they finish the event and they get like a video diary of their day. So say wow. it was say say it was an event, or so say it was a wedding, or it was a like birthday party, private thing. It's not like it happened and then it, they forget about it. They get a like a thirty second video diary of their day. Would you would you still classify what your offer as a musician or as an entertainer? That's the trick, entertainment. Because if you qualify yourself as a musician, then you are now with every musician rate, and you are now like they say, like the like setting your price points and stuff. Um, you don't want to be walking in and offering your service as like I'm the same as everyone. Right. Like, cause truly there's a point of like diminishing return. If you can sing in time, you can sing in tune and you know, the set, like, you know, all the decent songs, everyone's the you same. You just named me. That That's me. That's me. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's every gigging musician. That's why I thought this was going to set me apart. Well, Is that, that, oh, I, I can, I can write a song in, you know, live, which is cool, but it doesn't, no, I mean, doesn't. I don't know if it's going to. I don't so, know if it's gonna set push it over the edge. Yeah, so it's about pulling the levers of um well, it's, it's finding the levers that are gonna give you the highest return on value for the customer, not you as a musician. You might think Right, I get tons of value yeah. out of this. <laughs> cause <laughs> cause I because look at me, I live loop right. And so right. I'm one of my biggest fan, like I am a massive fan of a guy called Carl Walkner. I think he's a fucking god. I think he's like okay. straight up one of the best live loopers and you should check him out. He's amazing. I and would he, love to. Yeah. And he, I'll, I'll check that guy out. You check out Matt Bolton. I will. And um, so what happened was I was consuming his content and I was watching how he was looping. And then I was like, oh man, I just need to do this. And then people will treat me like him. And cause he has built yeah. an amazing brand over like, you know, 20 years for himself as a musician. Um, and he gets books, private functions. And so I was like, oh, maybe this will be the thing. And um, lo and behold, it was not. Um, I watched Ed Sheeran play um, recently, like a year ago. And then as soon as I watched him play live and I've watched how he looped, I was like, "Mm, this is how you loop. You just literally add it as an effect and then you execute on the song and it's all about crowd engagement and that's it. Mm -hmm. If you make it about you, that's fine. You can totally get an audience that will follow you just for that. And it's very, very niche and you need to be, but when you do that, you need to be fucking good. Like, so, yeah. so all, all of these things that I'm saying are trumped by being fucking good. <laughs> That's what, I, well, it sounds like, okay, I have the option to spend the next few years really honing my craft and being fucking amazing. 
or I can cater more to my, my audience and the person paying me. I would say, why not both? So why yeah. not get paid more and then use all that money to leverage higher skills that then get you paid even Oof. more? And that is okay. the, that's the strategy that I employed. So after I, I, um, I did the hundred. I million. thought you said when I thought you said when when Ed Sheeran was doing his thing that he wasn't trying to be amazing except for amazing with the crowd. Yeah, well, he was. He's being amazing with the song. He's being amazing with the crowd. He's being amazing with his performance, his vocal. Like, okay, I'm saying he's not being fancy. He's not. He doesn't need an extra to fit in there and an extra ooh, wee, ooh like he's not like how many extra layers okay. he's, he's not thinking like that when he's looping he comes in he's like I'm gonna play dive alright boom and then he's like bam starts drumming the, he's just he, I just need a drum beat cause it's gonna add a little bit of a mm, when I decide to do it uh, and that's it right I mean okay for, for so this, being being good is we still gotta focus on being good you're saying don't be extra fancy for no reason if you like it fine but that's not what's gonna push people over the edge exactly you know I got it. okay if you're, I, and I cut you off about your no next no you're thought, right but. you that's it like perfect you articulated perfectly because my my brain okay. is a bit like <laughs> but they um so like that is I get excited about this shit because this is shit I think about all the time because like um I use I do drives out west all the time like how can I make my product better how can I can, like I listen to a hundred million dollar offers every three months. I will listen mm -hmm. to it because I'll be like, okay, I don't. Every time I'm about to drive out west, like we just did a uh, uh, two shows out west, we drove for eight hours. So I listen to hundred million dollar offers, hundred million dollar leads, and I was like, okay, cool. I I I have now hit a certain point where a lot of these things are starting to make more sense. And so every time you just yeah. pick up something more and more. But the first hundred percent, yeah. The first thing was like reverse engineering what you've got as an offer and like what are all the value points because being good at looping doesn't that being good at looping is categorized in arrangement which arrangement will fit under how good you play the guitar do you have a band do you live loop do you have a backing track all of those things is where looping fits in so it's a very low leverage skill um for when it comes to pulling the lever on value for the audience member because the audience member is like that's cool but if you don't know Brown Eyed Girl and you don't know how to like weave in, you know, Jono on the side there who's with his girl and he's like, hey, Jono, you my brown eyed boy, you know, and like him just gets shy and then he gets like really involved and then he wants to sing the song or he's heckling you and you know how to bring him in on like Wonderwall and you're like, after all, Jono is my Wonderwall, you know, things like that. If if you can do stuff like that to bring them in, like the audience is part of the crowd, like your performance then you are now like that's a higher lever than any god tier level of like looping or band like i would perform oh, i would man. perform shows just solo and i kid you not a five piece band cannot engage an audience as well if you do not know the skill to engage an audience you're you're going to lose and and music is not a competition but when you're fighting for leads and you're fighting for bookings and you need to separate yourself and you need to decommoditize yourself within your industry and your space you need to have a set of skills that people can't copy and it's hard work but the cool thing is you do it a hundred times you will be pretty good oh, yeah. at it and then all the other musicians in your space don't want to do it because they're busy like either just wasting time during the week typically a musician during the like I only talk about this because this is what I did. Um, when I wasn't executing and I was stuck at a certain earning capacity as a gigging musician, it was because I, you know, I would go do my gigs on the weekend and then I would play World of Warcraft all during the week and then maybe like teach in the afternoons. And I'm like, cool, this is a good living. I'm making like 1,500 a week. This is great, you know? And most people that are like, that's full time. Like back in the day, that was full time. Um, like you For could, sure. you could easily live on like a thousand five hundred, super cruisy a week. Um, yeah. But as soon as I like bought a house, had to pay a mortgage, did all that shit, like that quickly <laughs> went up really, really high. And then also, I I discovered Alex Hormozzi, and you just you can't like listen to Hormozzi and not try. Yeah, otherwise, it's just like you just I don't I don't know. It's infectious. You just want to go hard. 
you're like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, for, for sure. I mean, I even, I even created a, a, a community on how to get more gigs with eight people, but I did it with, uh, I did it with the intention that I'm the nobody learning and, and trying to get others to join with me. Cause it was, it's not, it's not a paid group. It's like, here, I've got eight people that want to book more gigs. Cool. Let's figure it out. <laughs> I saw it. I was, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why I was so excited when you won. Cause I was like, oh man, this is going to be such a fun conversation. Cause uh, yeah, this yeah. is, this is shit that I just love, but I don't really t- get to talk about this because majority of um, the people that are coming through, they're all going through the earlier stages of like, I'm just trying to get good at music or they, they haven't yeah. hit the stage of like, I need a gig. Cause typically I see with all my friends, like, they don't want advice. They don't want to try and be better. They, they, whatever history of learning they have, they don't want to riff on like, how can we make it better? They just want to shit on the industry. They want to be like, this is so crap. People aren't paying me more. This is annoying. It's like, well, yeah, that's their budget. Um, cause like this is, so that the, this is coming back to what we first were saying of like, define your expectation of what you're looking for. Mm. Are you trying to make heaps of money? Because if you're, like a lot of musicians, like I need to make money as a musician. And, but they're like, the first thing is do more. So do more. Yeah. Gigs. Well, that's, that's exactly the method I, that I was thinking was like, okay, we're probably going to hit a, uh, hit a lid of 700 to a thousand dollars a gig. Let's just, I, let's just say that that's, that's what it is. Um, for a single person at a private event. Um, I mean, I've never, I thought I personally haven't pushed past 650 on four hours. Um, and you know, when I started playing for 50 bucks, that was pretty cool. Like getting up to yeah, yeah. 600, 700, 100%. but I haven't broke through, haven't broken through 700. And then the private gigs, uh, I don't, I don't, or the public gigs, I'm not sure how to even, um, you know, lean over 500 on those. But, but from what you're saying, like the thing that I know I can do more easily than this shit is learn to engage the crowd. I've I've been in multi-level marketing. I've had to do sales. I've had to do marketing. I've had to be the person, and I've had to I've put on I've put on live webinars, training courses. Um, I've been the talking head of like an educational course. So I've had a yeah. lot of practice being in front of the camera, um, and I think that's that's going to make it easier for me to just consciously realize like, hey, in this moment, it's about that person right there for just two minutes. And when people, people seem to like to watch that kind of interaction. And I bet with my tech skills, I could figure out how to get it on camera and create uh, a brand around the, the, the environment that I'm bringing to the, to the gig, not necessarily the songs I'm singing and how I'm playing them. That, that is one way you can do it. Um, Okay. The the one thing that I would just say, you're you're jumping in already, like, and you're thinking like, how can I? You're getting a lot of things. You're like, I could yeah. do this. I could do this. I could do. This. You're getting a lot of ideas, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. You can riff right. on this stuff, and like, this is why I'm here <laughs> to help you, like, spark yeah. inspiration. Yeah. The right. the thing is, it's brand. Like, as soon as you're going right. into this space, it's like, okay, what what are the levels of value? And then you figure out what, what they are within your space and your community and what, what your customer base is looking for. Um, whereabouts do you live in which city? Central, Central Florida. Yeah. So you. So between Tampa and Orlando. and So within yeah. your space of like a two to three hour drive, you uh, have. Unlimited gigs. Huge amounts of people getting married, doing 40ths, doing 50ths, 60ths. Like I don't have that. Like I, like if I want to go and do a bunch of good gigs and stuff, I got to hop in a car and I got to drive out six hours. (laughs) So it's like, it's brutal on the travel front, but for you with your marketing background and things like that, you can pull this lever of marketing that I don't have. I definitely don't have that Mm. available to me, which is like, cause I've tried it and I'm like, ah, damn, maybe it's just my skill as a marketer is not that good, but I just think depending on who your customer base is, you can do a bunch of cool shit. But the first thing is find the levers of value that you can deliver that are going to scale up your price. And you literally just keep raising your price till people say no. Um, for me, for me, the price is sitting at, for me solo, it's taken me like quite a bit of hard work over the past year, but I've gotten there and it's like solo is 2,200 for me 
for every show I play. And for my band, it's 3,400. And then we charge for travel anywhere we go. And so that has been <laughs> super fantastic. And actual feedback that I get from it now is I'm cheap. So the, the feedback I get from all the people that I do is I'm giving too much value and I should actually charge more. Because I actually get on the phone with people and they, I say the price and then they don't gasp, which is already I've, I've let down Hormozy when I say the price and Hormozy will say, you've got to get the gasp, you've got to get the gasp on the sales call. And it's like, and what they get is like, oh, sweet, I thought you were going to be way more expensive than that. And that is, that's, a, that's a failure on my part. And I feel that because I I feel the failure towards my band and things because I'm not compensating them correctly. Like I feel like mm. I, sh I could be doing more for them or bringing in someone yeah. better. But that's fine because we're we're in this season and this is the growth season. I'm still learning. So, but that's a huge, amazing thing for me to be like, okay, well, I worked so hard to bring value and now I'm getting feedback that my value is more than what I'm charging. And already, Amazing. like a musician to be like, man, for a solo gig to get like 2,200, obviously there's like, you got to pay tax, you got to pay GST in Australia. So 10% of what that price is, is given to Australia for as a service tax. And then I pay taxes on top of that um, as like mm -hmm. income tax. So what, I might be earning like 1,500. And sure. and the way I price my, uh, my bookings is I just do it for like whatever the duration of the event is. Like, sure. I, I will play for like three or four hours, but I will just have entertainment going for the whole thing. I'm not like fussy. Like I'll be around. It's all good. Oh, um, oh, right, right. I, th I think that's really important to, it sounds like if we could dive into the private gigs, um, they definitely pay better um, because there's a purpose behind it. You know, I was, I, I, I did somebody's retirement party and I responded within 30 seconds. It was 10 o'clock at night and you know, that's when the, the real conversation got going. And I'm looking back at this and this was my highest paying gig. And I'm looking back at that interaction and it was, it was so simple, so easy. It was so quick. And then I followed up the next day and I said, Hey, tell me about these people. What do they love? Do they travel Do they? And I was just be got, I got really interested. And she, at the end of the event, um, gave me a 50% tip of the agreed upon price. Amazing. And 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 I think looking back at that and hearing what you're saying is I can re-engineer this because I was intentional and I was very curious about the people and the theme and like what kind of music they listen to. And I created a custom set list just for them and perfect. Just really made their 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 event uh what they wanted. And during my breaks, I made sure to play music that was complimentary but did not overstep my playlist um but it just kept the vibe going um and then i would circulate the tables and say hi what are you guys doing how you know how do you know the how do you know the couple and is there a song or a style of music that you guys like and um really worked the, the worked the crowd for the first time uh that i've ever done that Amazing. so that's it I, dude yeah that's it like that that's it like so that that's what i mean exactly you, okay. you did it like you go back and go like Go back, what is your best gig? And then be like, I yeah. do that every time. And then once that becomes your norm, like that's your like your thing, then you just keep being like, how can I iterate on this? And then sometimes it will be mm -hmm. worse. And then you'll be like, all right, don't do that. And then <laughs> sometimes it'll be better. And be like, oh, mm -hmm. let's add that. And like, that's even better. Like, so that is the trick. The, before we like that's keep, awesome. I want to get onto the private gig stuff because I think that's the stuff that like a lot of people don't really talk about. But um, because- yeah. Because everyone's like a bit iffy about money, especially in entertainment. It's like you got to understand that like you got to work really, really hard to then get as much as you can in those situations so that you can then right. reinvest in yourself. Otherwise, you're just like a, right. a, a rat on a treadmill and you're never going to get mm. better and you're never going to get ahead in life. You're not going to buy better gear. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like as if that's what a lot of people don't understand. They're like they're, they're billing to work, not billing for profit. And if you're like, if you're not billing for profit, how can you buy better speakers? How can you better buy, right. buy better microphones? How can you have an extra wireless microphone just sitting on the side that you don't even use that you give to these people? You're like, hey, anytime you need it. Like, this is the thing. Like a lot of musicians are like, oh, they can just use my microphone. They get up on there. No, get a dedicated wireless microphone. Biggest investment I ever did. It cost me like 600 bucks. Just gave, I now I, at any gig, I just give it to 
whoever's there and I say, if you need a wireless microphone, we have it available for you. Boom. And they can walk around, right. do MC speeches, blah, blah, blah. Like you, you just have everything ticked off, every problem that they could come up with. You tick it off, but you need money to do that. So that's where it's like, right. But before we jump into that fully, because I love that stuff, um, the public gig thing, I would just respect it for what it is because a lot of musicians, um, like this is the thing. It's like, how do you make more money doing pub gigs? Do more pub gigs. Like we call them pub gigs because that's we play at pubs um, or like bars. So bar gigs, restaurant yeah. gigs, all those things. Um, your job in those scenarios is to play music, period. As long right. as long and majority of the venues, very, sometimes they care about music, but they care about their profit way more than they care about music, 100%. So they don't care if like you're engaging all the crowd because I've done it. I've gone and played to the gigs where I've had like the whole crowd loving it, absolutely killing it. Um, and then they're like, man, that was amazing. This is so good. And it's like, oh, cool. Can you like pay me an extra $10 an hour? Um, compared to the other musician, because obviously this other guy that shows up, you pay him the exact same amount, and he does not have professional equipment. He is not very, very skilled at what he does. He is playing the same songs like three times in one set. Um, he doesn't have the same professional demeanor as me. He doesn't engage in the crowd as well as I do. He looks pretty shitty. He's like shabby. He's not even like wearing like clothes that are correct. He's just sitting in shorts, and he's just like hasn't shaved in like four days. No. We won't do that. And and that is cool. I still love all those venue owners. I'm like, hey, you're running a business. You got to do what you got to do. But for a musician to try and change that game, that's hard. Uh, so for me, I was it's like- a good, okay. It's a good platform to learn how to engage though. You can, you can fail easily and it's, not really worry about it. Yeah. And a lot of people, like musicians are worried, like getting in on that thing is like, they're like, oh my God, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. It's going to be so hard. People are going to judge me. Like no one's going to care. Like at all. Like mm. if you make a mistake, they'll be like, oh man, that was shit. Anyway, move on. Because like, you know, Sally over there is like talking shit about like her boyfriend and blah, blah, blah. And they're trying to pay attention to that. They don't care about if you missed a note on creep or you messed up brown eyed girl. Like they just don't care. They've completely forgotten about you. Right. <laughs> Unless you like piss them off. <laughs> that's the, right. That's the you other insult thing. the 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 date of the you yeah know. yeah you're like you're like trying to engage with the crowd and then you're just like insulting people and that, that's horrible but the whole point is like um don't re don't be a romantic about the pub gigs and so that's what I did I was like okay um I need to gig as much as possible um to get better and then I need to do as many private functions as possible um and so all I would do was I would do as many gigs as possible and I wasn't romantic about it whatever price they set I was like look this is how much it costs. Let me know how much your budget is and I'll accommodate it. And I'll give you a vendor rate. But if I ever get a private booking, I have to cancel. And it can happen the day of um, or whatever. And some venues were cool about it. Some venues weren't. And I was like... Yeah, because if, 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 if you're upfront and honest that, hey, this is this is really low, but I've got no other gig, I'm willing to do it. Um, yeah. yeah I, that makes sense. That exactly. Makes sense. I just said, I'm giving you a vendor rate. Cause like you're a vendor and I've been working with you guys for ages. It is what it is. Um, like this is where, like if someone wants to book me, it's two grand. Um, and you guys only want to pay three, $400. I'm like, this is like, I have to say yes to this to support my family. And those, those right. opportunities lead to better opportunities for my band, which helps me support my band members, helps their families, things like that. So yeah, that's how I think about it. And, um, but, but it's crazy. Like venues don't think that way. They're like, you're messing with my thing. I have to rearrange it and find another musician. I'm like, look. I mean, I've done that. I've, I've had to cancel and I, I would work hard to help find the replacement. Mm. That way I can still keep that vendor relationship strong. Exactly. You know? The only thing yeah. I say is in hospitality, there's a lot of drama. And so like, yeah, they're going to, they're going to, cause they're just, their days are hectic and crazy. And mm -hmm. like, they have to deal with so much shit between like, customer complaints and then like you know staff complaints and all that stuff and then the musicians like hey man um i have to cancel this gig i can help you find someone else they just like they just don't want to deal with it they just get mad yeah. um they're like oh cool I'll, I'll just i'll 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 hook in on this guy and it's all good but i'm yeah, aware exactly. of that but it's more for other musicians to be aware that like that's what you're fighting against so just be like mm -hmm. okay if your goal is to make a full-time career and actually make money and be able to build a life 
and get better gear and move forward, it's like, okay, do as many pub gigs as you can or like bar gigs and then be find those levers of value and then work towards the private gigs. Now the private gig scene, this is like the main point was like, I found, like this is for everyone else, um, I found that any leads generated from bar gigs were usually not very good for public, uh, for private gigs, right. because right. they were they were very needy. Um, they just were like, oh, he's just like a guy who plays in bar in bars. Right. They didn't put a lot of value on on what my skill set was, and um, they just just wasn't like the best vibes. And so yeah. what I found was I had to do less pub gigs, like less bar gigs. And focus more on just getting the right people that I wanted to play for on like private mm-hmm. functions and weddings and things like that, that I could give all my energy to and they loved it. And then we would have like the most epic nights ever. And so that transition is a really hard transition, like super hard. It, so I have a, I have a business. I'm not, not hungry for the pub gigs, but if I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hear what you're saying, do as many of those as I can to solidify my my talent as a musician solidify my my repertoire um but then when i'm ready to move into private try to do less and less pub gigs because they restrict my ability to make those private gigs amazing exactly yeah and also because um they're just going to wear you out you're going to be tired and and you will get into a you get into habits i see it all the time uh, musicians that are doing lots of um, pub gigs or like bar gigs, they take that same energy and that same effort to private gigs. They're just like, oh man, I love private gigs. I just got to do the exact same thing I did and I just get paid more. It's like, no. Wow. A private, wow. A private gig, it happens all the time and you would see it all the time. You go to an event and the musician's just like, oh yeah, my job is just to play music in the background and make it sound good. It's like, no, your job is to entertain. Your job is to be like, when someone's ready and you see it, like you, you will catch them. You, they see, you see their interest, they're tapping their foot, they're doing it. You acknowledge them. You bring them in. You make them feel special because at a, at a bar gig, you've got churn. Like the people are coming in yeah. and then they leave. Yeah. They come in, they're leaving. So you can just like kind of repeat it. But at a private function, a wedding, things like that, they're with you for the night. So you want to build, you've got... You've got like four to six four hours. Four to five hours, yeah. Like just, you know, if I queue in on somebody, I've, I, I might have them the whole night. And Exactly. That's really powerful. That's really powerful. And for them, they, like, for you, if you're a musician, you know, you're in the in the zone of like grinding out a million things. But you might, you because you play so many shows, you might, you just forget stuff. Like, you're like, oh, I remember that person or whatever. But for them, that that makes their fucking day. Like that makes their yeah. night like you can make people's <laughs> nights and that's what people don't get as musicians. And they're just like, they, they go in and they're like, I just need to grind out and do this. I'm going to get paid. This is sweet. We're getting paid a little bit extra. Nice. I can, I can get more sushi this week. You know, <laughs> I, I still remember my cousin's wedding from four years ago and the DJ did not walk the venue and his speakers were not big enough or, or loud enough for the venue. Oh, and I gosh. still remember that wedding. Like you could only hear the music in one section of the the ballroom. And I was like, why, why is there only three speakers? He's like, well, I didn't know it was so big. <laughs> Just did you get here the day I walk for my private events? I usually walk the venue. Um, and I really get a feel for like what I need to bring with me. Um, so we've got a few more minutes left and I hope you don't mind if I interrupt you. No, we can keep um, crushing, man. Just keep going. If you were, if you were transplanted into a new space and you knew your songs cold and you weren't worried about building up your skill set, um, I'll be there in four to six months. So I'm just thinking the next term. And you wanted to get as many high quality private gigs as possible. You mentioned anniversaries, weddings, uh, office parties, fundraisers, nonprofits, just doing whatever. Um, where would you spend your time if you didn't, if you weren't trying to make your, um, your set amazing, pretend you you're happy with your set. It's all about the outflow and the, the connections you're building in your community to yeah. get those connect, you know, those gigs booked. 
I would be running ads if you because you're in America. It's running yeah. ads is going to crush. Um, and okay. when I say running ads, I would be thinking like, what is going to be the best songs that I know that are going to engage a bride? Uh, and then I would make like a fun little clip of me doing that stuff. You would you would have to collect footage or you would have to curate um, like covers of yourself, like singing a. Uh, a great cover like this helped my friend get heaps of leads uh he just did a video of him his wife and and the rest of the band and they played like uh i think it's uh you make my dreams come true mm-hmm. Ooh, or whatever they're doing they just played a song uh or valerie yeah. or something that you play like a party song and you just get like a cool like professional video of you just playing that with the the right audio and then you know have that like 20 second clip and you post it on instagram and then you run an ad or on Facebook, and then you run that ad, and then you target exactly who you want to target. And then, you know, you just keep trying on ads. Like, that's all I would do. If I had all the skills, I'd be like, I just need the ads. But okay. the main thing is it's it's about brand. And, like, everyone gets the brand thing wrong. It's, uh, like, the have you seen Alex Hormozzi's video on brand? No, I probably haven't seen that one. 100% look for it. Try and find it. He has like okay. a master, his like master class on brand, whatever it is. He's been posting so much content now. It's been like, oh, so good. But he yeah. has brand as like when people see what you do, they change their behavior and that's it. He's like, they need, they don't, brand is not like fancy this, fancy that, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's, it's as simple as they see you, they change their behavior. And for me, brand has always been about, they see my brand of me or my Sneaky Beats brand, or whatever it is, and immediately they think, he's a fucking beast. He will entertain. Mm. He will make our event fantastic. And that Mm. is the only thing. And he's professional. He doesn't mess around. When I'm at a gig, I don't drink. Um, I'm married, so I'm never messing around and being an idiot trying to like flirt. And you see all these other musicians, they do it as well. It's like super unprofessional. Um, Mm -hmm. as much as they want to be rock stars, it's like, it's unprofessional as hell. So it's, it's like all of those factors, they don't affect me. So immediately, um, when someone sees my brand, my goal is like high value, high level of entertainment, great musicianship and great guy. Mm -hmm. Like if I can get those four things absolutely nailed in my brand, And that's not me running ads and me doing marketing. That is when right. they interact with me and they see my my performance and I'm at their show. That's the brand that I got. Now, to execute brand is doing what you say when you say you're going to do it. And that's it. So when I show up to the gig, I deliver high value. I entertain everyone. I'm professional as hell. And we have a great time. Wow. So And, and then you just do that. Every time you have a gig come up, you do that. And in private gigs and weddings, you can always do that. Like you got your chance to, mm-hmm. to, to do that and people will remember you. We just did um, these this race event that we did on the weekend. The We shot the video. I shot all the video. I had such great interactions with the crowd. We had high value. They haven't had a show like that in forever. And wow. And every bit of feedback that they said was... We've had so many musicians come out here um, and some of them have been really, really great, but we've never had a musician that has made us like feel a part of it or has engaged. Wow. They, they they don't know how to define it. They don't know how to like, like they don't know to them. It's like something magical. They're like, oh man, you must have this like talent of like connecting with the crowd. And it's like, I'll, no, it's, it's. Literally- I was going to say, it's, it's almost like they're saying they've had great musicians out there who are really happy being great musicians exactly. and they want you to know that you're, they want you to know that you're, they're a great musician. And then it sounds like you're saying I make your crowds make feel like I know they're great people and they're fun to, to party with. And yeah. And you're leaving that impression that you came there to serve them. Exactly. And they're, yeah. and they feel a part of the show. They feel a part of the whole, like they feel like they have been taken care of. And it's not, mm-hmm. it's not, it's not the Luan show. It's not anything like mm-hmm. that. It's whatever you guys want. Now, mm-hmm. you pair that because typically, 
it's really, really hard to build up that skill. And then it's also really, really hard to build up the music skill. Now, for me, I was like, well, what if I have both? And that's where I'm starting. Right. That's the that's the kind of case, like the the level of skill that I'm hitting now, which is like, all right, my vocal is improving like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, like compared to what I was last year, I was like garbage vocalist. Um, and my guitar playing is improving because I'm playing every day because I'm live streaming. Mm. Uh, and then, um, and then I'm engaging on TikTok and stuff. So I, like every seven seconds, I have a rule. Like whenever I'm on stream, someone like you can watch my streams, you'll see it. Someone communicates unless I'm really, really into the song and I'm like, because when I'm streaming, my goal is to practice and get better. But Mm -hmm. if I have room and that person jumps in, I've got like a 10 second window. If I don't engage with that person, they could click off. You know, Mm -hmm. that's how how short the attention spans are these days. So I get really, really good at hooking in on someone within 10 seconds. Now, if I go to a wedding, I don't have a 10 second window now. I've got fucking six hours to mess with that person. Mm. We were playing a wedding and this one guy, he was, by the end of that wedding, he was besties with me. He was just like, (laughs) we were making jokes and I was being like, um, I I was calling him Jay. He didn't tell me his name. So we just called him uh, Jay. I can't remember why. (laughs) There was, we called him something. Um, And then he'd be like, bro, I'll be anything you wanna be for 65 an hour. And I was like, oh, 65 an hour, let's go, buddy. And then I start playing Pony and I'm like, doing, I'm like, get up on here, bro. And we're like, we're just like completely messing around. And then like a guy in the back is just like, I can see he wants to dance with his girl. And he's like, play John Mayer. And I was like, bro, you wanna dance with your girl? And he's just like, yeah. And I was like, all right, let's get it. So slow dancing in a burning room, start playing. He's like, oh, he gets so excited, brings his girl on the, the dance floor. They have like this little dance. And then this other girl runs in and she's like, fucking soldier boy. And I was like, all right, soldier boy. And over the top of slow dancing, we're singing soldier boy. So they're still dancing. And then this chick is just like, oh my God, he's actually doing soldier boy. You know? <laughs> so it's like to have that level of uh... musical mastery to be like, I yeah. can just do anything I want and it will work. And then, wow. then you have the entertainment value because I'm like, I'm serving this person. They're dancing and the the music is danceable. Like they can have their slow dance. Yeah. But yeah. But they're also laughing while they're dancing because they're watching this chick do the whole soldier boy, soldier boy dance. It's like, like those, like for most musicians, and I know because it was for me. I was like, oh, that that must be the crowd. Like, I just lucked out on the crowd. You know, you think it's like a bl- like a blue moon thing or like a shooting star or whatever. Like, oh my God, that, w- that just happened. It's like, no, you can engineer that shit. And it's engineered mm-hmm. from the second you walk on a stage. Um, one of my professors at Berkeley, his name was Livingston Taylor. His name is Livingston Taylor. He's James Taylor's brother. Um, and And he teaches this live performance class at Berkeley. And it's like one of the best classes you can ever take at Berkeley. He does one and two, we took both of them, me and my friends. Um, He taught Charlie Puth and all these guys. He's absolutely amazing. And he says, your performance begins the second you walk in the room. He's like, when you are setting up, you are performing. When you are tuning your guitar, you are performing. And and like you said, you walk around the room, you start to engage with it. When you get booked the gig, you are performing, you are ready in performance mode to serve the customer. And that's where everyone fucks up. Because they think the performance starts as soon as they have to actually sing the song. It's like, no, it's every little aspect (laughs) before that. You need to be able to like curate the most amazing experience for someone. And if you can do that, charge whatever the fuck you want till people say no. And then that way, you only have to do one or two gigs a week And you get paid really, really well. And then you're practicing your music during the week. You're buying good equipment. And then all of those things are compounding, right? So for me, it's like, it just keeps compounding more and more and more and more and more. And the skills keep getting better and better and better and better and better and better. And then all you're doing is becoming untouchable. Yeah. The only thing that can, the only thing like in my space, you give me another two years of doing what I'm doing here, there will be not one person that can outperform what I do. And and the only way they can do it is by doing double what I do because I'm not gonna stop. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna keep right. getting better. 
because I'm going to keep, I'm going to make money off my stream. I'm going to make money off my coaching program. I'm going to make money from my gigs. Everything will just keep going up in value. And then like, then I will just spend more money to learn more things. Like uh, the other week, I just spent three grand and I'm just about to jump into Content Academy, which is like a, a, mm -hmm. a really successful YouTube coach. He opened some spots for his thing. And he said, anyone want to come in? You have to apply for it. I got accepted. And he's, I'm like, I know that if I spend $3,000 here in five years, I will get back a hundred grand. 100%. You know, and so basically a lot of musicians uh, or just in general, any creator or anything like that, or just in general life, it's like you, they don't want to get better. They don't want to spend the money mm -hmm. on the skills. They don't want to keep getting like next level and just keep cranking and cranking, and cranking. They're just like, it'll all work out. And he's like, no, it's just, <laughs> it's just like, it's like you got to sit down and be like, what are all the things that I can do to be like an absolute amazing entertainer? Um, and, and like being a musician is only one part of it. Right. And, wow. but, but if you do that, right, like, I don't know what your, your, your dream is for your life. But like, if your goal is like, Hey, I want to quit my job. And all I want to do is this you could fucking do it. Like it's, it's not, it's not far fetched to be like, all right, cool. All I do from Monday to Friday is I play music all day, every day. And then on Friday to Saturday, I do two events and I get paid, you know, five grand, six grand that week. And then I peace out, you know, like, and then you've got your online school. And if you nail it and you can figure out all this, like I'm, a, I'm going to make a free course, exactly what we're talking about. I'm going to make a, yeah. that's going to be one of my courses that I make. Um, it's after I do my content creator course, I'll be doing this one. But well, I don't, I don't know that I need the school because also all I'm trying to do is get the information on like how to do how to do what you just said. Yeah. So that was my, I was like, I bet if we get a bunch of people in here, we can figure out how to make more money as musicians. But, but that's it. Like, it literally <laughs> is it. And it's yeah. people don't want to do the work and they think i got to get better marketing or i got to get better. Mm -hmm. It's like, know all the songs, be really, really good at music, make people feel special. And like when I say make people feel special, like they need to feel like you care. And so the actual number one way to show people that you care is actually to care. Find right. out what music they like. Like you said, you know, when they feel like they're taken care of or heard, wow, what a crazy concept, right? Give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, yeah. Whereas like, you know, cause you're so used to playing at a bar show that you're, mm -hmm. you, you're not, you're never going to see some of these people ever again, but um, that you're like, oh, well, what's, what's the point? You know, you know that it's not going to be, well, I don't know how it works in America, but because you guys get tips and stuff, we don't get tips here. Um, very rarely. Oh yeah. Like, no, there's, there's a, there's tons of ways to get tips. Uh, there's even this app that lets people request songs you don't want to play. <laughs> mm. They'll pay you to play them. <laughs> See in Australia, we just got to play the songs. <laughs> Otherwise the guy with his beer, he's going to get you. No, but, but the, um, that's like, that was like my motto for every time I like, for, I was like, all right, did someone throw a beer bottle at me? No gig was good. You know? So it's like, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now there's, there's been some good, some good tip, uh, money at the pubs that, uh, that I play at. Um, so man, I just, I got, I'm like, I'm eating, I'm drinking from a fire hose, right? There's so much to take on this call. I have to watch this call again. Yeah. Um, so I've got a public gig coming up and I'm like, okay, I've got 200 songs to choose from. I'm not worried about that. Um, but I think what I'm going to spend the next, you know, couple days before that gig is, um, just making sure that the song, like playing the song is so ingrained in me that it's not a distraction from what I can start practicing to do with the audience. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it's if it's as important to um, spend time making sure this lick is perfect. I could probably just strum the chords, or if I should be like watching YouTube videos on crowd engagement, watching great performers, and try to like pull from their like where would I spend my time on these short? And I see a long term vision. What are my short term stones I need to make sure I'm stepping on? I would like so. I can only speak from experience. I can't. Sure. So for me, when it came to live performance, uh, engaging with the crowd, 
Oh, actually, I just want to answer this question. So you said you've got 200 songs. Do you use an iPad to yeah. look at lyrics? Uh, yes. Okay, so how many yes. how many songs on that set list of 200 can you do without lyrics? Easily 40. Cool. So you want to raise that number up to 120. Okay, just out of out of my pocket, just go to them. Okay. The so one thing that I did with my band as well, um so I lucked out super hard. I got a really great drama. Um mm-hmm. and they're hard to find. Yeah. And um and with me and this drummer, um I would when I play my gig, I have zero plan. I like have an idea. I'm like, oh, it's a bit of a country crowd. But I'm like, whatever's happening in the moment, it goes there. So that means I never have to look at my iPad because I know every, I don't like I have my phone there in case someone asks for a song that I don't know and we'll just like Google it and we'll because just because it's fun and we'll literally say we don't know the song let me Google it and we'll be like hey Siri how do you play X song like what was that we was like Stacy's mom I said to everyone I was like guys this guy at the front here what's your name and he's just like my name is like I think it was Doug it was, and I was like Doug 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 from like the what is the what's that movie. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I was just like, I started doing like a jingle of Dougie Doug. But anyway, I went back and then I was like, hey, dude, oh, my Siri is going off right now. It's like <laughs> trying to like Google what I'm trying to yeah. say. But uh, yeah, uh, then I just said, so this is a straight up interaction. He asked for the song. I called him out and I said to the whole crowd, Doug wants Stacy's mom. Do you guys want us to play Stacy's mom? And then everyone was like, fuck, yeah, let's go. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, we don't know how to play the song. So let me Google it right now. And I, like, as I'm typing him, I was like, ultimate guitar, Stacy's mom chords. And then, and then, and I pulled it up. I was like, all right, here we go. And then we started playing it. And um, my bassist is like looking at me and he's just like looking and he's like, he knows the song. So he's cueing me. I don't really, I, I know Stacy's mom, but I don't know it well enough. I can't remember the melodies yeah. and stuff. I didn't even know there was a yeah. key chain. I f- forgot about it. I was like, I was like, oh shit. I didn't know there was a key change. Yeah. And, um, and so, we oh, just, that's right. Yeah. Mom. yeah and i was like oh God. when it got to the key change i was like what the fuck and then i was like oh god <laughs> but anyway we went into it so they they went in with an expectation that that this is going to be shit we slayed yeah because oh my our, our musicianship is fantastic and and i know yeah, how to play the yeah. shit out of guitar and i just got them to sing parts that i didn't know i'd be like you guys sing right. it bo, 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 bo. and then like they just did it so that was a set of skills that like that's an execution from like if I don't know a song, how I can bring the crowd in, do the song. Yeah. And because we have the musicianship that like, even mm-hmm. if we don't know the chords, I can learn a song in under like 10 seconds, especially if I have the music yeah. in front of me. Um, yeah. And I'm ready. Like I already know how the song goes. Boom, we're done. My bass player knows how to follow me and my drummer knows how to follow me. So yeah, anything I do, they will always have my back. And I mm-hmm. I will literally change songs literally mid chorus, and they will yeah. follow. Like they are that good now. They are so fucking good. Yeah. So we have That's that level awesome. of dynamic thing. But going back to what you're saying, like how do you build up the skills for what you need to do? You need to make the music. You don't think about it. Right. Like unconscious. And, just it's already there. Yeah. Like you. Like I, I was explaining to someone, they were like, how to sing and play guitar. And I was like, well, so like the very first part of the song is you need to be able to play it in time. So you get the guitar timing down with the vocal rhythm. Then you're going to get the melody and the lyrics down, memorized. And then you're going to add whatever guitar arrangement aspects that you put to it. And that's in the part, like sing and play guitar course that I have. On, and that's the exact process that I go for every song. Uh, and then once those things are down, you master the shit out of that song. So you never have to think about it. Because... If you have to think about a lyric or have to check a chord or anything like that, that's one second you might miss something special. And they know. Mm-hmm. The crowd knows. Crowd knows if someone has had complete control of their playing. Like there's a, a level of confidence that you project in your performance. So the first <laughs> skill is make the music just not even a thing that matters. Mm-hmm. I saw I saw a performer who was so in it, and then for a split second he looked at his chords, and you lost the persona that he had. Yeah, and he like completely vanished. Like he had this this 
presence for his song. And he was like embodying this, uh, this Johnny cash. And then he had this look of uncertainty as he moved his hand. And I was like, dude, you just blew that. Yeah. And I didn't realize like, like that's probably how I look when I'm looking at my chord charts. Yeah. It's, um, straight up like an Achilles heel. And it's like, mm. do you want to do the extra work? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Like if you wake up every day and you do like two or three hours of just working on it, work up, work up, work up, you will get there. Um, but a lot of people, they just, it's, it's, it is hard work and, and they don't want to do it. It's very, very easy to do it. And so, but the beauty of it is it's so easy to be better than everyone else. Cause no one else is yeah. going to go and do that. <laughs> everyone else is going to exactly be like, right. oh, the, the advantage of having the iPad or whatever is mm -hmm. I've got 200 songs. You could say to me, I have 200 songs for me. I only have 120 songs. So I have less songs than you. But when that song comes on, I am so fucking on that like mm. it is completely intentional. It is – I'm like hooking in. There is no – there's such fluidness. Like it's just we're jamming, we're jamming, and these I can hear this lady in the back. Like, should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? And I'm like, I got you. I got you. Finish the last chord, eh? Down, 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 down. And then I'm like, let's go, girl. And I just literally point to her. And then the whole crowd's like, fuck yeah. Blah, blah. <laughs> and like, that is the thing. Like, you know, a musician who is like, I don't really know the chord. Because the thing is, if you if you go to the point where it it is a, it's like riding a bike, right? You know, if you only know how to ride on cha training wheels, it's like, well, I need to make sure I'm on a bike with training wheels. You know, so it's like, mm -hmm. so it's like the same thing with songs. It's like, if I only know how to play the song by looking at the chords, I can only play the song by looking at the chords, you know? And your insecurity yep. will make it so that you will just forget. You'll be like, oh my God, if I'm going to forget, I'm going to forget, I'm going to forget. So then when that girl says, Shania Twain, and I have to be like, I finish the song and then I go to... <laughs> that moment you, you lose it you lose you're gone. it but if she yeah. sees me play that chord like i'll do something like shania twain and i'll be like um I'll, I'll, t I'll get to that man i feel like a woman and then instead of going down down i'll be like boning on there doing it i'll start playing the riff because it's in the same key i'll start playing the riff mm -hmm. of footloose so, of what footloose? Yeah, so it would be like so seamless. Yeah. They'll go from they'll do I'll do two choruses of of man I feel like a woman and then at the end of the last chorus I instead of playing the same riff of man I feel like a woman I play the riff of footloose which is in the same key. Mm. Now I finish footloose on the chord of A. Mm -hmm. And so if I play a man I feel like a woman and they love it and then I play footloose chances are they're going to be a Garth Brooks fan or at least have heard a Garth Brooks song. So I end yeah. on A and when I end on that A chord, I strum it. Like Blame I, it all on my roots. Yeah, exactly. I arpeggiate it. <laughs> and I'm like, do, 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 do. And so they just thought the song ended and then like, oh my fucking God, he's about to play Garth Brooks. And so it's like, you have this, the, like this flow that you can just like yeah. completely take. But or, or inversely, they've just been dancing for like three or four songs and I'm about to hit an A chord. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's play Tennessee Whiskey. Let's slow it down. Mm. you know mm -hmm. so i can i can curate my sets on how people flow so mm -hmm. that's the mastery of the entertainment that you can get whereas you know i've played in bands that are very successful and they do well and they'll go play their shows and they have to fight they have to advertise they have to pester people i don't pester anything i actually just hired someone to to take over my sneaky beats bookings because I was like, look, I'm going to give you all the content and I've got a killer product, but my focus is just getting really good at music and that's it. Like I want to get really wow. good at music and I want to deliver super high value to my clients and that's why I want to get really good at music. And then the third one is like I want to create a community. Like the, the coaching community developed because I was live streaming and people asked questions. And I was like, well, every time I have to answer questions, I'm not practicing. So why don't I just record like a hundred videos of content and download everything I know, which is like, that's a stupid idea. But because like, that's a lot of time. I was like, <laughs> when I sat down and when I thought, oh, this is a good idea. And then I went and did it. And I was like, this was fucking hard. 
I only have like two courses and I'm like, God damn, this is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of fucking work. And I'm like, and I only just did the beginner stuff now. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to do everything else. But it pays off because now someone asks, oh, I want to sing and play guitar. And I was like, cool, no problem. Here's the course. And they just go and do mm-hmm. it. And if they watch it, they watch it. If they don't watch it, they don't watch it. Most of the time they don't watch it, but they appreciate that I took the time to answer their question and also give it to them. That means... Yeah. I'm, an interaction that previously would take eight minutes to a 10, 15 minutes or whatever on the stream now drops down to like 10 seconds. And I'm mm. like, we're all good. Now I can keep doing my music. And then I wow. found then I found people, I was like, I love teaching. I love teaching, but I hate being a teacher. Like that that's me. I hate being a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I hate I hate having students come in and sit down for like 30 minutes and I watch them practice for 30 minutes. That shit kills me. Uh, I just do not have the patience. I can't do it. Like, I mean, I can do it if, if like, gun to my head, I have to earn money. I have to do it. Like, in January, I had sure. to I had to quickly come up with a bunch of money. So I said, all right, who wants lessons? We'll do it for a term, maybe two terms. And then I immediately was like, this is not sustainable for my, for my brain. I am not that guy. Um, there's a lot of great teachers that love doing that kind of stuff, so you go to them. Um, but... Then the the coaching program popped up and then I was like, oh, sweet, this is sick. Like, I love having these conversations where I can just talk about cool stuff and then be like, Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a bunch of stuff and it's going to be like, (laughs) and then you can go back and watch the video and you'll be like, implement one thing and it will will help you win. But essentially the the progression of skill will go from making musicianship tight, um, Practice engaging with people. Um, and when I say engaging with people, not, you know, hey, guys, I hope you guys are doing great. It's like, no, watch people's mannerisms. And when they look at you, cute, like hit them. Like mm-hmm. that's the trick. Make it personal. Yeah. Not make it like, yeah. not try to bring people in. You you don't want to do that. That's hard. That's like mm-hmm. that's like throwing shit at a wall. What What's the point of doing that? You know who's right. there. You're fishing. You You play through songs and you'll be like, all right. When I first start a set, I'm like, I'm fishing. I'll play a bit of country, a bit of rock, a bit of pop, a bit of rap. I'll throw tease people. I'll be like, any of you guys into, into dancing? And I'll be like, dun, 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 dun. and I was like, don't worry, we'll do that later. And anyway, and but I'll <laughs> I'll see who's in and who's yeah. not. Yeah. And then I'll be like, okay, cool. Like this is the person to f- focus on. If I do something dope, focus on them. I was doing a guitar mm. solo at one wedding, and then this guy that was very close to me, I could see he was pe- he was looking at my hands. I was like, dude, do you like guitar? And he's like, yeah, man. I was like, oh, this is for you. And then I just ripped this fat ass fuck solo. And like everyone there was just like, they could see I was just looking at him. I was like, you like it? You like it? You like it? You like it? And then I just, and then just back into the song, like without skipping a beat. And he was just like, fuck, I love you for the rest of the gig. So it's just like that 10 seconds of investment on him. Yeah. Yeah. Won me like four hours of respect, you know? Mm. And so that's what I mean by crowd engagement. Not like, mm. guys, make sure you follow me, blah, blah, blah. Like that, that's, that's like really, like they can feel the insecurity in that. They can yeah, feel- the, the neediness. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, <laughs> the second, the second you need them, like more than they need you, it, like they feel it. Like, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta have that level of, I mean, it's not, I don't know, swag. I have very little swag. <laughs> like, my wife makes fun of me. But the the thing, is, like, you got to have, like, this level of confidence. And But that will only be, like, built up over time. Like, you've got to have a lot of evidence that you can do it. And at this point, mm-hmm. for me, I'm very confident. Like, I wow. know that I can walk into a, 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 I could play a wedding or I could play an event and no one will be on the dance floor. And I'm like, it's all good. Like, sometimes my band will panic. They'll be like, uh, we're we're playing Valerie and no one wants to dance. Like, what's going on? I was like, it's cool. They don't want to dance yet. It's been a long day for them. They want to chill, sit down, talk with their friends. That's fine. I can see one of the uncles over there that I had a conversation with like two hours earlier. He's over there. I'm going to call him out. I call him out. I'm like, hey, mate, this is for you. I remember you like this song. And bam, I play like, like there was a wedding I did recently and they, they did not want to dance. Literally, they did their first dance and then they did like a father-daughter dance, which was really great. Um, and then we were like, oh man, everyone's in the dance floor. We're going to crush this. Boom. Valerie gone. Literally first chord 
everyone off the dance floor. And a lot of musicians are going to panic in that moment. I'm going to sit there and be like, it is what it is. I'll see them back up here in about 30 minutes to an hour. <laughs> so instead, I was like, they just want to sit down. And all right, they all want to yeah. sit down. They're not dancers. That's all good. So then I just made it all about them. I started playing songs. We started having banter while they're sitting on the table. They're yelling out shit to me. We're having heaps of fun. And they're loving mm. it. And then when they wanted to have a dance, they're like, play me this song. Bam, hop on dance floor and we play it. And then because Dang. three or four of them want to dance, then another like five or six come up. Mm-hmm. So that that stuff with the crowd engagement, that is so like you got to have that. Like you got to work it, you got to practice it. And that level of confidence and no panic, like no fear, like everything's about to go to shit. Like, oh my God, no one's on the dance floor. I'm, <laughs> people are spending, like, especially when you start charging a lot of money and people are like, yeah. you're like, oh my God, no one's on the dance floor. They just spent all this money on me. I'm doing their wedding. This is their only time. Like, I mean, I don't know if some people think like this, but when I was like, I paid for a wedding. I don't know if you, you've had to pay for a wedding before, but like, it's a fuckload of money. <laughs> and like, yeah. And if you're not yep. getting what you want, out of like the services that you you hired, you're like, you get annoyed, uh, especially yeah. in hindsight. And you're like, fuck, I just wasted that money. My goal is to make sure that like, they never think that. They're like, oh my God, yeah, yeah. I can't believe we got that for that much. That's amazing. Oh my mm-hmm. God, this was the best night ever. And so that's the trick. And like, that's like that's the cadence. Like, that's what I'm looking for in the show is like, don't panic, just deliver value. And if the value for them is like they want to sit down and have conversations with their friends but then still feel a part of it, do that. And then when they want to dance, they make them dance. Don't be like, guys, get on the dance floor, guys. Like that's – you see that. That's like insecurity popping out. Yeah, that makes sense. But being able to sit Man. back and be like, I can handle this. This is all good. They need to know I'm not freaking out. You know? <clears throat> and be as cool <laughs> as a cucumber. Even though, even though on awesome. your inside you're like, oh my god, 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 I need to make sure, like, what can I do? What can I do? And it's like, usually at that point, because I can lean on my musicality, I'm like, all right, I just like I say to the boys, slow it down. We just mm-hmm. slow it down. We'll do more guitar solos. Be more musical about it. If they're not wanting to dance, then don't try to make them dance. If they want to right. listen to music, give them good music. And so then we'll mm-hmm. give them good music. We'll do a bunch of, I'll rip some guitar solos. We'll be chill, be very creative. And they'll be like, you can see them in the back. They're vibing. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. Man. So the first one's musicality. Second one is make sure that you can engage with people. And then the third skill that you would have to do is execute on your brand. And that will become from mm-hmm. communication. That will come from the way you package yourself, the way you interact um, with people on like off the stage like all that stuff emails phone calls do you make their lives easy um Mm -hmm. like say for instance you're booking a bride or a birthday like if it's a bride for instance brides are the ones that you you'll hear people like in the service industry or whatever they'll be like oh bridezilla and blah 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 it's like i have never had a bridezilla (laughs) ever it's all about who's on the other side of the phone yeah because every conversation i have with a bride or whatever is like you will be taken care of whatever you need they don't have to panic and i say and even with my bookings i just say i don't i don't take bookings like hourly for a wedding just because i already know what it's going to do to you so i like my bookings are like for any event i'm like hourly is just like unless it's like a corporate function and it only goes for like two or three hours then i will help them out yeah. and I, I give them a price that's hourly but any like proper event i'm like don't worry. Like we finish at 12 yeah. and we'll start whenever you need us. There will be music happening. The ambience will be set. You never have to think about entertainment. Any mm-hmm. song you want, we'll have it available. Like if, if I can't sing it, it'll be on our Spotify playlist as soon as we stop playing. Like you will be taken care of in every single way. Um, you need a microphone? Here's your microphone. Like yeah. I do. I did a wedding with a, with a bride and she was like, Absolutely no father daughter dance. Like we're, we're not doing it. We and I was like, okay, cool, no problem. And then we're playing, and then she's just like, did the first dance, did a couple of songs, and then the photographer was like, oh man, this bride, I think she really wants a father daughter dance. 
And then I just called her over and I said, hey, do you want a father-daughter dance? Well, I'm, we're still playing, by the way. <laughs> I'm having this conversation yeah. while I'm strumming chords. So like that's the level of musicianship like uh, that mm. I that I got to. I was just like, there's no thinking. I'm just vibing. Like you yeah. see it on my streams. I just I can talk while still playing because that yeah. I got it down so much. I'm not I'm not trying to do crazy licks. It's just simple chords. You know, bring it down right. so I can have a conversation. Like, do you want a first dance? Do you want a father daughter dance? She's like, yeah, I really like it. No problem. Can we do it over like my girl or something like that? She's like, that'd be perfect. <laughs> and then literally that second. I stop the song. I say, everyone, can you guys clear out? We're going to do a father-daughter dance with the bride. And then, boom, I start playing my girl. She has the father-daughter dance. She's happy. Mm -hmm. Like that, like other musicians don't want to do that. Yeah. Like, it's very like, just get in there and get it done. Like, yeah. Like yeah. You, your, your job is to provide the highest level of service, not be a rock star. Mm -hmm. and, and right. That's where, where people will get it wrong. But that's the beauty mm. of it, like, because musicians just focus on music and, like, mm -hmm. themselves. There's a there's an ego that goes to it. I don't care because I'm I was blessed enough to go to Berkeley and then move. Like, I got to go to Nashville all the time and, like, I got to meet literally the best musicians in the world. And mm -hmm. so I realized I fucking suck. So mm -hmm. I am very good when it comes to professionals. Like, I can mm -hmm. I can do a very good job as a professional. I'm a great musician. But I know what the good. I know what really good looks like, mm. and I know what's required yeah. for that. So I'm like, yeah, there there will be no ego here. I will just keep doing what I do, and I will keep getting better. And if I get close to that, that's wicked. Like the the goal yeah. of my my career tra trajectory is to live stream and practice every day. And if I can hack that for myself, and I'm playing mm -hmm. like five six hours a day, I'm like, I'll hit mm -hmm. some modicum. I will be some version of like my standard of like where John Mayer is. Cause like John Mayer is not practicing as much as he did when he was younger. So I just have to do what right. he did when he was younger and try and do double of that and then get close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, yeah. So then, then I'll be like, Oh cool. Uh, but I've got, you know, 30 years to do that. I don't need it to right. happen right now. So yeah, that's where it's like, if you can have that unlock on the ego and you are focused on the people and you are focused on the customers, you can just build a private brand as an entertainer and a musician, that means that you only have to work one day a week if you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But it's, you know, it's a, it's a whole week. It's a lifestyle. So it's not, you yeah. just could be working all week because it's, you know, you're not going to get paid once a week, but it's a, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. But if you um, wanted to, like if I wanted to right now, I could step back and maybe like practice one hour a day if I wanted to, mm, or I could just mm. practice like once or twice a week and then I could just go do my private gigs. And I could be mm. lazy as hell. And I could just play video games all day if I wanted to. Mm. But I see. But I'm not going to do that. I'm like, yeah, this this machine that you've created, it, it's self perpetuating because, yeah. you know, the, your activity brings awareness to other people and it just keeps feeding them the monster. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. So. It's like, I, I don't know if you saw the, the video that I posted recently because I got like a, a thing of like Road to Virtuoso. I've been documenting my journey since i said yes i'm going to do this content creator thing um wow. but the most recent one i did i talk about it i'm like i did not expect it to like the community to get better and then be able to just like go super super hard on like now i don't really consume socials i'm always like trying to look at the community i'm like did anyone post anything did anyone do anything because i saw the i saw your logo thing that you posted and i was like oh, we oh can yeah yeah so i was like I'm watching, I, I am watching, sometimes I don't respond to people's stuff just because I'm like literally editing content or doing things like that or working mm -hmm. or trying to be a dad and a husband. Um, yeah. Because yeah. my wife, she's third trimester right now. So we've got another <sighs> six weeks to go, six or seven weeks, and then our son's born. So uh, Congratulations, man. So it's going to be fun, That's but no exciting. sleep. You'll see me on school posting in the community at like two, three in the morning, my time. And I'll be like, yeah. I'm yeah. Taking care of the baby. Yeah. Oh man, dude, dope video. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's been like the really, really cool thing for me. So that's um, awesome. So, so hopefully like a lot of that stuff helps you. Like, just yes. Oh my God. I have to watch this, this. And I think it gives me a lot of peace of mind that the road to, to greatness isn't always just more. Yeah. It's just different, you know, 
And I'll do this for fun, but I think, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to really take a hard look at the way I've been practicing because a lot of times I'm just dicking around with technology and (laughs) I'm like, what can I do to just get back to the thing that people really want, which is a great set and changing the definition of a great set is not being able to play more instruments and layer and layer and layer, which is cool, but it sounds like a great set is, um, improving my 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 ability to know my songs cold right and then to be able to just make it not a distraction so i can engage with the audience and i think that 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 little bit is going to take me a lot further than oh yeah that's, before this call that's that's so. gonna help you crush man like that's awesome memorizing the lyric like memorizing lyrics is like phew. It's, it's not changer. that hard. Like if I just put my attention on it, it won't take me very long to get the rest of those songs. I I was thinking, ah, this is good enough, and let me do other things to enhance my set. Um, yeah. So, but pro hack on. I that think it's going to be right? a lot easier. A lot easier. I'll give you the pro hack on the lyric stuff. So if it's chords okay. and lyrics you need to memorize and you want to memorize right away, literally, mm-hmm. I don't know what your day to day schedule looks like, but. First thing you do when you wake up, if it means you have to wake up earlier, wake up early and immediately, like have a coffee and immediately start memorizing. First thing you do, highest leverage thing, jump in. If you're, if like whatever the skill is that you need to require, just jump in, Mm -hmm. memorize the lyric and memorize the chords, just play through it. Usually I go, um, I keep the song in time and I just like sing the the lyric with the song and then I just practice on my own. Do that for like 30 minutes Mm -hmm. in the morning and then after you have lunch or whatever you do, do it in like lunchtime and then don't do it in the yeah. evening. Okay. And you will so find like you'll move short term to long term. Yeah. So I the will, memory. Yeah. I, for some reason I, there's a scientific thing behind it, but I can't remember what it mm-hmm. is, but basically if you go in and you split it up into two things and usually in the evening, it's really hard to retain a lot of information that you consume because of like dopamine or whatever the blah, blah, blah happens in your brain. But if you mm-hmm. do it in the morning, one, you have your highest like levels of stress or whatever. So you're like really, really focused and you have your mm-hmm. highest levels of dopamine like availability. So it's like if you think about mm-hmm. like motivation and like learning and all that stuff, it's like squeezing a lemon. Yeah. In the morning, it's like yeah. you just squeeze the lemon, all the juice comes out. And then in the mm-hmm. afternoon to get all of that dopamine and that juice out and that reward and motivation, you've got to like really like hook in. So if you can do it okay. in the morning, the, the shitty act of like, I hate memorizing lyrics. I hate it. <laughs> fucking hate it like so much like there's two things i hate the most memorizing lyrics and learning guitar licks hate them hate them so much you can watch i'm going to post a video of me learning johnny be good in the stream you can just watch it the visible pain in my face of like i hate this fucking shit i hate it i know zero licks zero like the only licks i might know is like chattahoochee because like Ages ago, I wanted to learn it because it was fun. And I like Brent Mason. And he had like the solo in it that was cool. And that was wicked. And then the other, like, I don't know. I don't even know how to do Brown Eye Girl. I, I got yeah, asked I, to play in a band. I just sing the chords. Yeah. <laughs> just like, dude, no one cares if I go, do, 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 do. like some people might. But yeah, I'm also like, well, if I spend all this time learning a guitar, like I could learn another great song. So the 80 20 i got gotcha. you yeah it's like okay. what is what is the leverage on the time because like really yeah. it comes down to like can you memorize the chords can you memorize the lyrics and then play the groove really really well and now how mm. many songs can you do that and that makes a great entertainer not a guy who can like crank a mad solo if i spent 30 minutes looking for the right synthesizer sound yesterday i was like god damn it what am i doing like this is stupid <laughs> yeah but that's like I could have learned two songs. But that being said, like you, there's a there's going to be a cap on like how much productivity you're going to get with the learning. Yeah, and then, yeah, and you need to go through the days of like getting a good sound. Like so, if right. you're feeling that if you like go to learn a song, you're like this is painful and I'm not getting it. Then you just go back and then then just sit down and mess around and be like, all right, cool. Like I did learn a song today. I'm a bit tired. I'm just going to like go through all the synth sounds and see if there's something I like. And then you just write right. down whatever synth sounds you like out of like 10. And then when you're feeling more fresh, you can come back and be like, oh, these are the 10 ones that I like. But today, I think. But only it definitely like- took me away from the thing that I was trying to do at that time, which was just practice. Exactly. So it's, 
it's the discipline to just know when to carve out that time. Yeah. Like it took me so long to sit down and do my helix. Um, but the mm. day that I did it, I, it was a day I was like so tired, feeling pretty shitty. And I was like, cool. Mm. Today is a day Perfect that, day. that nothing good is going to happen. <laughs> like mm. my vocals, like today I'm starting to get sick. So I'm like, uh, I wonder how I'm going to go on the stream today. Cause I'm getting sick. My, I'm feeling a bit like congested and all mm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, we'll see how I go with my vocals, but I might just play heaps of guitar today, you know, um, or answer questions. But you just, you whatever you're feeling, don't be a slave to yeah. like, it needs to be like this every single time. I mean, you can yeah, try good. it. As long as you just be like, I just move it forward 1% every day. When you mm-hmm. look in a year, you'll be like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like I, <laughs> I look at my performance ability now and like I even said to my wife, I'm like, wow, this is like, I had a vision and I execute on the vision. And then now we do these shows, we go, we play, everyone loves it. I don't do a show that people don't love. Like That's I, amazing. I haven't had a show. Like, and I was like, I was before it was like hit and miss. Sometimes people engage something. I was like, I've like filled all the holes. Like the only things that I'm missing, there's two things that I'm missing um, in my performance that I need to work on. One is I just need a, I need another like 30 more like straight up bangers. Like mm. just flat out like uh, like I can do a really, really crazy set. But say mm-hmm. I wanted to do two hours straight of like just nonstop cranking. <laughs> Um, I sometimes get a bit nervous cause I'm like, I have to move the style around a little bit to like bring people in and out of like, maybe I'll move into like country bangers and some classics. Then we'll get a little bit of pop and maybe get them to sing Eminem, lose yourself or whatever. Like I have to move mm-hmm. them around genres, which is great. Um, but I would like for me personally to have another like 40 songs that are just like eighties bangers, nineties bangers. Like, I think my biggest weakness is nineties which is so weird because that's mm. my generation. Like I'm missing like, yeah. I don't have NSYNC songs. I don't have Oops, <laughs> I Did It Again. I don't have any of these ones that I just need to put in my set list. And so. Oh, that's funny. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is I need to get fit. Like that's why I'm going to the gym and stuff. Like uh, like the energy to get more energy. Uh, One, so I look good in clothes. Okay. Um, Because the other thing is like people judge you. Like. Yeah. You can't change humans. Okay. Like they're going to judge you. The second they see you, if you walk in and you're slobby uh, and you're not like very prepared and you're not like, you know, you haven't shaved or whatever, like whatever your, your whatever your curation of your your vibe is, if it is not yeah. what you want it to be, they're going to judge you immediately. Like, mm-hmm. and so like I walk in jeans and boots and I wear a, a button up shirt. I just need to look good like mm-hmm. that. I need to look mm-hmm. like a, like a, like a, a, a uh, handsome dad is the goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I like, gotcha. I with gotcha. This, with just a little bit of style, and that's it. I don't need to go out there and be like, "I'm a fucking rock star," blah blah blah. You know. But yeah, yeah. But it needs to be clean. Like it needs to be professional. It needs to like people need right. to know. They'll know from the way they see you. Like, say you take care of your health and you're fit, then they already know you're disciplined mm-hmm. and you give right. a shit. Yeah. So then that means if you go to sing their song that they love or take care of their crowd or do anything like that, it, it it's a, an uh they can't deny that immediately yeah. their, their judgment will be like that. So those are two things for me. It's everything communicates. Yeah. Yeah. But that's only if you want to be like Man. super hardcore and serious about it. Like for me, I'm going to be super hardcore and serious because I'm like Yeah, exactly. Cuz I sit down and think about it like the way I look at it is like if I don't do these things I will not earn more money for my band. I will not be able to take care of my family properly. I will miss out yeah. on opportunities with my child because instead of me, you know, having a better situation with my time, I now miss out on all these, like all of her cool moments or my son's cool moments. I miss out on hanging out with my wife because I have to work extra. Um, if I'm not doing well at the gigs, then that means I can't put more time into the stream. I can't put more time mm-hmm. into content because now I have to go and do extra gigs, you know? And so I look at it as like, I am not servicing my community and the people that directly depend on me to earn money. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that is what motivates me to do better. Whereas That's awesome. if you don't have that motivation, like for me, if I did it for myself, I never did well. Like I could, like it. <laughs> I'm me, with you, man. I'm with you. 
for me, I would just like sit down. Like if, if it was just Luan, no one else in the world, what Luan would do, wouldn't practice, I'd just play video games all fucking day. <laughs> Straight up. Like that's, I, I just, I'm a lazy piece of shit. Like that's it. So my hack was um, for anyone who's wondering about like productivity. Raise your, raise your necessity level. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. okay, how do I practice every day? I set up a stream that I had to be accountable for every fucking day. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I had to post content regularly. And then I was like, oh, how do mm. I like super, super be accountable to this community? Oh, well, I'll just say I'm going to build a music school for free. And I'm going to put yeah. in all of my content. So I have people message me all the time. Hey, when are you going to do this content? When are you going to post it? When are you gonna and I'm like, thank you. Keeps me grinding, you know? Yep. And then that's awesome. And then I have a wife and child. So I was like, all right, well, my kid's going to not, my kid's not going to magically just stop growing up. And when she when she hits a certain age, she's going to be going out to you know like her soccer games or whatever and Mm -hmm. like family events. And if I'm not available because I fucked up Mm -hmm. now by not building a career that allowed me to be flexible with my time, then that's my fault. No, that's perfect, man. That's good. So that that was my hack: have kids and, and build a community. Um, yeah well, and then you'll get really why good I started <laughs> that's why i started my business seven years ago because i had the same situation because i wasn't good enough as a musician at that time um but seven years later the business is is fine and that's why i'm like okay let's let's go back to the thing we should have put all of our attention on but it does pay off um dude that's so cool like and that's yeah that's so noble like and that's the thing it's like you can go through times where like you just focus more on your business and then you do your your gigging you have a beautiful yeah. win of like if if I was you right now. So like is your business doing like well for you? You're like you're good. You don't need to do anything extra with it. You've just got extra time I, in the I, evenings now? Yeah, I, I'm about 20 hours a week and um, my team's like, go play, go play music. I'm like, okay. Oh, so. perfect. Then all, all <laughs> I, if I was you, like um, I would not be, I mean, if you want to do pub gigs for fun, go ahead, like. If you think that that will help, it, do, you. it doesn't sound like that's where I'm going to go after this call. I, I think I'm going to just try to be a badass private gig musician. Like, and yeah. that sounds more, way more fun. I'm going to do the public gigs just to practice some of the things that I'm doing in here before I'm on the big stage. Yeah. But I'm not going to try and like fill my calendar of 80, 80 pub gigs a month just because I need, you know, 100%. Not, man, not, if you can, yeah, if you can whenever you take the pub gigs and they come around and by the way the coolest thing about doing pub gigs is when you're just like yeah man like let me know if you're free um i'll take them uh then the the booking agents don't think you need them and then they're like oh well yeah, let's get him and he's cool like he's yeah. not you yeah. if you're not the one who like i always say to Colin. <laughs> yeah i always say to musicians that <laughs> like um they're like how do i get into gigs and do all this stuff and i'm like well just be excellent Every time I tried to get gigs, I would get an extra gig or two, whatever. But when I just like slayed as a musician and I was super chill with all the booking agents and stuff, they just wanted to fill my calendar. Like, we love this guy. Mm. He's fucking cool. But there's going to be musicians that are going to undercut you. There's going to be mus- musicians that are going to talk shit about you and then be your friend. There's going to be musicians mm. that do all that stuff. That's what that ecosystem looks like. And it's not a fun ecosystem. Um, mm mm-hmm. I don't enjoy it. So I'll, you know, I'll take them when they come, but I'm not going to try to like beg for them. Yeah. Um, I would no, build it, you, for, yeah. for you directly right now, just because I want to make sure I give you like that value right away. If you're going to go down this path, I would either make a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel or something that you can go and you can experiment on shit and you can practice in engaging with people. So the my biggest oh. hack would be literally be like, all right, in the evenings, I'm going to start streaming. And then okay. <laughs> you turn on your stream and no matter how fucking shit it is, you can make it, don't even make it a re- like, it's not even connected to any of your business or your private gig stuff. Sure. Just sure. go in. Like, I'm going to set up a creator course so you can copy exactly my setup, how I do it. Like, okay, you're going to go in and then when random people jump in, one, you are going to see zero for a long time. Yeah. Zero viewers. In fact, I don't even look at my view account. I hide everything. So mm-hmm. I don't want to know how many viewers are. My only focus is I'm going to get better right now. And because there's a camera mm-hmm. on, it's going to change the way you you do it because you know everything's being recorded. Yes. Which is cool. 
So yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of people are scared of it, but it no, will, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it will make you really, really good, really, really fast. Um, mm. Because one, just pick a cadence that works for you, like time wise, mm-hmm. and be like, all right, every every like Tuesday, Thursday. I'm doing my live stream and then in between them I'm mm. working on extra things and then on my live stream I'm going to perform them and then if you do gigs on the weekend do the gigs um, right and then every single time your goal should be like how can I be better today in this stream how can mm. I be better how can when I see someone does type in the chat and goes like yo what's up you're like yo what's up immediately like you like mid song you you practice and in the beginning mm-hmm. you're gonna fuck up like you're going to try and engage with someone and you're going to miss a chord and make mistakes and you're like, oh, shit, I made that. You're going to get better. And then instead of you going and playing 50 private gigs to get better at this, you can just fail on the internet, which is even better because you can re-watch what you did. You know, it's documented. Yeah. And then if you do cool shit, you can clip it and be like, all right, I'm going to use this for content. Or I came up with a cool thing. Awesome. I'm going to try and recreate this. Um because mm-hmm. we would do clips on my stream and I would just cut the clips from the stream and then I would post them and some lady wanted to book me for a birthday party of 40th and she was just like, oh, um, let's let's do this. She's like, I was like, how come you, you booked? And she was like, oh man, I just loved it. I was like going through your content and you were like singing, you know, like Eminem and you were doing this one and like this, I love all that music, it's so cool. And I was like, like people watch, like, when they, when they go to your brand, they're going to go and then they will like track you. So you can curate you like Adam, mm. you know, your brand yeah. that you want to sell. You can curate that. But you can create the content mm-hmm. on the side on like some fucking dodgy ass mm-hmm. channel that you don't know. Like no one needs to know. Like, like for, I got you. Okay. For me, I want like everything to be a guy. Go yeah. You can yeah. just, you can go fail on the internet and no one needs to know that that is mm. who you are in like some people might want to. Um, I like sure. to integrate everything just because it's like, I don't, I, I really, if I want to fail, I want everyone to know I'm failing and getting better. Right. Because it's yeah, better, no, that's, better to look like the underdog. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And I, I don't, I don't have a problem putting my name on the, the, the live stream. Um, yeah. when'd your content course come out? Uh, literally or when, when are you starting that? Yeah. So I've got another show Thursday, another show Friday wedding. And then Saturday, Sunday, I think we're organizing the nursery. <laughs> and then I think yeah. the for the next 10 days after that, I don't have another show for like over a week. So I get like a whole weekend off. So I'll be like mm-hmm. cranking. I've already started like planning it. I just need to like finish mm-hmm. scripting it and then just push record. Usually the recording is the, the faster part because it's it's yeah. unedited. It's not, nothing crazy. It's just about making Good. sure the information is um, put together correctly. But- It'll, it'll most likely be done within a week or so. And oh, awesome, man! Well, I can't wait to. Uh, yeah, and you, then you're actually starting another school for, for, for content. No, no. So I only. No. I, so that. So it's just a course. It'll just be part of the free music, m- music. Okay, cool. Community. Cool. So the school of music will be like content creator course for musicians, basically. Good. good so good. it'll teach no, I'm you. I'm definitely gonna. How to live stream, it'll teach you how to run a door, Ableton, exactly how I do it, yeah. um, and all the effect chains. And then it will um, be on how to edit videos on DaVinci Resolve. So how I do all my shorts and everything that I do. Exact flow, Sweet. all the shortcuts that you need, blah, 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 and as fast as you want to do it, how to make thumbnails, blah, 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 all that stuff. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, what, whatever gets everyone across the finish line will be sick. And then once I get, finish this YouTube course that I'm going to finish, I mean, I'll have you- this is- even more content. This is this is going to be so exciting because I'm going to be a perfect um, data beta tester for you. So I'm a decent musician with not making enough money as a musician. I'm going to follow every fucking thing you tell me, and then in a year we're going to do another one of these videos and we're going to talk about it. It'd be funny as shit, man. I'll be so keen. Dude. Like, yeah, like <laughs> anything like that. That'd be that'd be sick. Like, it- yeah, I'll just. I'll just pretend like I, I know nothing. I'm just going to follow everything you tell me and oh, dude, just yeah. see what happens. Like I, I reckon it, like it's a, it works in every industry and like, yeah. like Alex Holmose's books. It's like everything he says about gyms, just put musician. Like literally, yeah. Like yeah. literally yeah. just like copy paste. Like, 
and um, mm -hmm. and you'll find some things work. Something, and I always actually found like just pick one thing you want to work on mm -hmm. and then get better. And then once you get better at that one thing, you're like, all right, cool. Now, because the the difference between getting a skill from one to like seven is like really fast, and then from seven to like eight out of ten is going to be yeah. like double the amount of time, and then from eight out of ten to ten, like is like quadruple or 10 times the amount of time. So what you want to do is at the start, you just pick the skill, get it up to seven, then yeah. pick the next skill up to seven, then the next skill up to seven. Then once you've got like this whole, like you've raised everything up to a seven, then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to raise this one up to an eight and then this one up to an eight. This, And then you just like slowly increment till then you get everything at like eight to 10 and you're like, sweet, I'm on fire now. Dude, that's so funny. I have a product called seven to eight accounting because it talks about how most businesses just get become average. And and I'm like, I'm not going to get you from eight to 10, but my accounting firm will get you from a seven to an eight. Yeah. So that's it. Like it, it's, you literally it's just go, just so like funny. figure out whatever skill you, you suck at. Cause a lot of people will be like, they've got like, they got the song list and they're good at the singing, but they have horrible crowd engagement and they think that they're going to mm. get better gigs by being better as a singer. It's like, dude, it doesn't make a difference. It's like, Mm. you could practice every fucking day going from an eight to a 10 as a singer no one's gonna give a shit they're not gonna pay you more money mm. they're not gonna want to book you more gigs they're not gonna do anything like that it it is so rare like mm. and this is only coming from a place of someone like who is doing it um that how i do it because mm -hmm. there's one big caveat that we just haven't even talked about right now the caveat is being an artist because an artist is someone who can actually sell, like has a competitive advantage that like we as people who aren't artists have to fight against, which is- the Original. An original artist. But okay. that, that whole road is something I'm not super familiar with. I only know from the outside watching how other people have had to do it and the level of sacrifice. And I was like, I'm never gonna do that. Like trying to get mm -hmm. on, get your foot on, like get on the bill for festivals, trying to get a supporting act for different like touring artists trying to do mm -hmm. um, a lot of radio show interviews, trying to get accolades. Trying, You're spending a lot of time doing a lot of those things and it's not actually working on the craft of music. So it's something I don't really recommend uh, for someone who is- It's working on music, not in music. And it's, it's the business side instead of the actual yeah. craft itself. But it's not even really the business side because you're not really in it for the customer. You're building like this ego, this persona and then you're trying to sell mm. that. And then you're using the persona and that brand, like I wouldn't say brand because like when I say brand, it's like you say what you're gonna do, like you say you're gonna do this and you do I it. See. And that's the brand. But yeah. this is like a, an image really. And then, mm. and then some events will want to use that image because they can use that to sell more. But the truest unlock is to deliver an insane performance. And then the word of mouth of that performance, it's like, they know that you're you're just a, a sure bet because someone's going to offer a gig for like two grand and then say you're going to offer the gig for six grand. If they know a hundred percent that if you're going, that you hop on a stage, everyone's going to dance, everyone's going to sing, you're going to get video, like so, say for instance for me, if I try to sell my product, everyone knows they're going to dance, everyone knows they're going to sing, everyone knows it's going to be easy, they're going to get a video afterwards, it's going to be a huge bloody vibe, and everyone's gonna share it afterwards, talk about it, so that the next time they do another event, it's even better. It makes it really easy to stand out compared to someone who says, I'm gonna play songs for you for two hours or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and they they might they they probably haven't booked that. Well, you know, before. what you said was is a is the hundred million dollar thing, which is don't compete. If you like you're not competing anymore at this point. Yeah, exactly. That's I mean, pretty much for me. For me, it's like I just want to deliver a great show and I just know yeah. what my value is because right. I know what other people are charging and I'm like, I'm definitely doing a better job than that, you know, mm -hmm. and that's all I just aim for. And if people want that, they get that. Now, plenty of times they actually will be like, you're out of our budget or they won't do it. So I watch, I watch them spend, like, so for me right now, like people have booked us and they got a great result. Um, that being said, last year, I was missing a lot of the entertainment value. I, I had to work on that over this year. So this year, I'm on, I'm on fire. Like, I've built that yeah. skill now. I'm like, let's fucking go. So every show I do now is like, the, the amount of referrals is insane. 
Mm. Like we did the, we just did this races event and then straight after the event. So yesterday was Monday. Um, we just posted one photo and then one video in the afternoon and we've gotten four leads. Oh, nice. <laughs> just off word of mouth, like straight away. Like, yeah. We want to book this. And so that is the power of really doing a good job. Um, and because a lot of people, uh, I think, um, Hormozzi said as well, uh, he's like, oh, what's the funky thing he's like? He's like, a lot of people assume that just because they got booked that the other people will then refer you. Like, just because people are like, oh, thank you. Like, doesn't mean they're going to be like, man, that guy was fucking awesome. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, and I know, yeah. I know for me, I played a friend's wedding when I was really green on gigging. I played at my friend's wedding and that hurt me. That wedding fucked me. It was, a, it was great to play it, but that wedding, I was too green. I didn't know enough songs. I wasn't super confident in my performing skills. And people that were at the wedding were people that made decisions for bigger events that I wanted yeah. in the future. So yeah. instead of me going and, and like when people put my name forward, be like, oh man, Luan's great. Like you got to get sneaky beats. They're so fantastic, blah, blah, blah. And then the person who's making the decision, I saw him at my like blah, blah, blah's wedding and he was not that good. <laughs> I have to fight that now. It's hard to recover that. It's hard to recover that. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, I mean, I'm just, I'm grateful now that I work very, very hard and like it's, yeah. now it's just, there's just too many people that keep saying it. And the mm. person that really inspired me with this one was like Brad Paisley. So Brad Paisley, um, he told us like, when he was getting his re first record deal, um, so he came by at Ber uh, we did we did a trip to Nashville, and he came by with his um, co-writer Chris Dubois. So his co-writer that he was working with all the time was um, the son of a famous songwriter who was the owner of Arista Records. I think he was like the CEO at the time or the president or whatever. So he was the head decision maker. Now, before Brad was ready, they showed him one of the songs that they were working on. So straight off the bat, Chris Dubois' dad was like, he's not very good. So he had to fight that. So instead wow. of waiting for getting good, which in turn would, is also like a blessing, you know, he just grinded harder. And it had to mm -hmm. be that everyone around the president, everyone around Chris Dubois' dad, I think it's Tim Dubois, I think maybe is his name. Sure. He wrote like... Um, uh, diamonds, diamonds or something. Oh fuck! Any, it, gigantic, huge, gigantic country song. Anyway, di, di, okay, yeah. Do, do you know the song? It's like a uh, diamonds. Uh, uh, fucking loves the diamonds. Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, I can't okay. remember it. But um, apparently it was a huge song, and he was a super successful writer. And then he had to wait for everyone around him to say that Brad was good enough. To then be like, well, maybe we will sign him. And then he <laughs> finally got signed. Wow. Like to the point where like Brad's songs were being picked up and like major artists were trying to take them or possibly cut them. And and wow. then he, and he like couldn't, still couldn't get signed. Wow. Wow. So it's like, so first impressions when it comes to being a musician, they, they matter. And so like. That's a good point. So that's yeah. why I say to like people like work really, 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 really hard. <laughs> and cause mm. your brand matters. Cause I've, I felt mm. the sting of that. I felt the sting of, wow. I said I was going to do something. I was going to entertain a wedding and I didn't do it. Mm. I mean the, the, right. the bride and groom loved it. It was great. They got a massively sure. good deal. It was like, like for instance, if they were trying to book me now for their wedding, it'd be the, it'd be <laughs> like quadruple the price. So yeah, yeah, they yeah. got a good deal and that's fine. And, and like we had a yeah. fucking great time. Um, but it's hard now because I have to now convince these people that doubt me yeah. whether or not it's worth it. So that's like, yeah. that's the That's good challenge. advice because, uh, you know, I went, out, I went out of town. I drove 30 minutes when I started doing my market, uh, my farmer's market gigs for free. Is I just wanted to play out loud in front of people and really make a mistake, and I, I always drove to the farmers market two towns away. Yeah, 
<laughs> but now there's a live stream. I don't have to drive all that way. <laughs> yeah, like so like you want to get in and you want to fail hard, fail early. Yeah. But just make sure that you're not um like there's there's a point to push yourself, but there's also like a mm-hmm. point of like do not be naive. Like when I say go and fail, um when someone like don't be chasing the gig too early. Make sure. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That yeah, makes sense. Cause Use you, wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there's a there's like a kind of uh, an understanding that you'll get and, and like the flow of it. But I mean, yeah, I say this. I mean, you already kind of know this. I kind of say this more for like if anyone happens to like fuck, we've been sitting here for nearly two hours talking about business and and music stuff. So it's like if if you're a musician that's trying to figure out like life and like how to approach like a career as a private entertainer and things like that. Mm-hmm. it's super important to be like, do not bite off more than you can chew. Um, and if you are going to, um, do it in style. <laughs> and and be aware go on, go. <laughs> Be aware that you, are, you have now made the mountain a little bit steeper to climb. <laughs> uh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, I survived it. So yeah. It just, it's more like, okay, well, I just have to work extra hard and then do the extra work. I mean, you should do it anyway, mm-hmm. but it'd be sick. But you, you've got a really cool position where, I, I mean, I wouldn't, unless you need all the money right away. I mean, like for me, I need money. I like, I need to do yeah. it. So I would be like, all right, I need to go and teach. I need to go and do all the pub gigs. I need to do as many as I can. But I just had, I was like, all right, this is my my season of two a day. So I would stream mm-hmm. and I would do like my 30, 40 hours a week on content creation. And then I would go and do my 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week of gigging. Like I can't do shit about it. Like some weeks, especially in January, February, I was doing 10 shows a week. Oh my God. If you include my streams. So I'm like, I'm smashing the streams. Yeah. And especially my streams early on were very like performance orientated because I wasn't hadn't figured mm. out my style yet. And like now I'm like, oh no, I don't need to be going super hard on the streams. I just want to get better at my, my ability each day. And that's what mm. I do. And then I find that I get even better because I can be more creative in um, like people request songs and we break down the songs so I can actually get into like the theory about it and figure it out. Yeah, give yeah. More value to the community, but I'm also getting value because I'm like, oh, that's what they're doing here. And I'm like, this. Because you're not conscious of the things you know sometimes. And so when somebody puts your attention on it, you you start to relearn some of these things. It's really cool. Yeah. So I'm like, and I'm just like yeah. learning crazy. Like we did Cream the other day by um, Prince. And I was I like, I saw, I watched it. I watched it. And you were talking about his, uh, you, you analyzed his, um, his crowd engagement where he's able to just effortlessly come in and out of the song and bring them into the song. It was, very, it yeah. was a really good um, analysis. It was very good. After we did that, like after I watched that, I fucking literally did it the next gig. And That's it awesome. worked. That's I'd, be awesome. Like, I'd be like, that wasn't good enough, y'all. Let's do it again. And then I played it again and <laughs> boom, they nailed it. And, I was like, and they were like, oh yeah, let's go. You know? So it's like. That's awesome, man. It, it's, it's scripted, man. It's it's straight awesome. up a skill. There's n- like these mm. guys have already documented it. You can look at the best people. I copied Ed mm. Sheeran. I copy Prince. I copy as as many people as I can. Copy them and mm. then you develop your own style, and you you're just gonna absolutely kill it. But the fact that you're asking the questions is so much further ahead than everyone else because everyone else is just like, I just need more gigs. They're not like, how do I get this? Because especially musicians, mm. I find are very very closed. There's an ego. And they do not want, they don't trust other people because they're like, mm-hmm. well, if, if I tell these other people their secrets, they're going to take my gig. I go for it, man. If you can, it's just the spirit of abundance. Like there's no shortage of gigs. If you're, if you're going to play with, you know, your, your integrity for who you are. Yeah. I don't think there's any shortage. So, yeah, it, but it is, um, but it is real. Like when you, yeah. like I felt the sting of someone being like, I want a refund on my deposit because I didn't say no re- non-refundable deposit because they just randomly, like a w- like a few days earlier, decided to change their mind and wanted a different entertainer because it was a friend, and they like, yeah, boom, there goes five hundred dollars that I already had in my bank account, and now I've lost another, you know, I've lost a thousand dollars total because now I'm not doing the gig and I haven't got a gig to fill in that <laughs> that right. Weekend. You know, or even like this week, tomorrow I was meant to play a gig and I was going to get paid a thousand dollars for it and cancel. So mm-hmm. it's like, 
but that's because of weather. No biggie. Uh, I'm not stressed about it. But for some people that aren't really, really confident in their ability to, to get gigs and things like that, they mm-hmm. will, they'll, that stuff will come along and they'll be like, oh my God, I'm fucked. I don't know mm-hmm. what I'm going to do. I just, I was banking on that and now I'm fucked. And then when they see like, yeah. they get an inquiry for a gig and then they see their friend goes and gets that gig, they get the sting. Whereas for me, I'm just mm-hmm. like, bro, if like someone sees what I do and then they say no, I'm like, it's all good because I know my friend yeah. is now taken care of. I know they've got kids. I know they've got a family. I know they've got goals for their own lives and they're going to be taken care of, yeah. which is a really, yeah. really hard mental state to get to as a musician. Um, for sure. Because in the, in the beginning, you're just like, oh my God, they're, they're stealing from me. You know, there's like this weird <laughs> ego that they're like stealing. Like I would have musicians yeah. all the time under company. I would have musicians like encourage me to charge more and then they would go to the venues and they'd be like, oh, this guy's charging more. Like, can we just like, um, why are you booking him? Don't book him as many times. Like I'll do it for a better price, you know? Yeah. Things like that. It's just like, I get it. <laughs> You've got bills to pay. I get it. Yeah. And so it took a long time to separate that between like, bro, like sometimes I'd give people gigs. I straight up give right. them gigs. I give them income. And then they will, once they get the gig, they will then shit talk me to the client. Yeah. And I'm like, just to make themselves prop better, like, oh, I'm giving you a better deal. He's overcharging you. I'm like, yeah, bro, you don't even need to do it. You've got the gig. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but that is the industry. I don't hold it against them because yeah. I'm like, that's how they do business and that's how they will do it. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm always yeah. like, be excellent and and be a nice guy. And then usually it comes back because yeah, it they, does. They always sure. people always respect people like that. Um, yeah. And then like that's that's the only things that I that like irk me. So it's like it's really hard to find this information because not a lot of musicians want to talk about it. Not a lot of musicians yeah. want to like get on that that track. So I appreciate you taking this. The time. This this track is gold, man. I'm gonna have to watch this a couple times every. You know, in, in a few months, I'll check back and watch it again just to see if I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah, dude! I, I didn't sick. even eat. I didn't even eat dinner. I'm like starving. Yeah, so me it's too. almost I ten o'clock over here. <laughs> I missed my gym workout. I'm like, oh fuck, <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> dude, you gotta go. You better go, man. Oh, it's all right. I'll just get changed ready for the stream, and then I'll just go to the okay. gym later today or something like that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to eat and then I'll catch you on the stream. So. Dude, I appreciate you taking the time and congratulations Dude. on on winning and, and giving to the community. Like that's why, yeah. that's the whole purpose of this. I mean, it's cool. I mean, Absolutely. we went a bit over time, but um, I think other people <laughs> will find heaps of value in it. So, Absolutely, man. I, I sure did. So I appreciate your time, buddy. Awesome. All right. Shred hard, bro. All right. I'll chat to Thanks, you soon. All right. Bye.